Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, what I have for you is kind of a video where I just want to run through some example pipeline, or not pipelines, but projects. One or two of them is gonna include a pipeline, all right? I'll get that out of the way first. Um, but really just give you the idea of a couple different projects that you, as someone who might be entering the field of data engineering, new to the space, projects that you can build on your own, host on GitHub, um, and then you know reference in your resume or LinkedIn, to actually have a reference point for jobs. You know, one of the hardest points, parts of getting, breaking into the data engineering uh, industry is, hey, you can't get job experience until you get a job, but you can't get a job without job experience. Um, so what you can do to kind of solve that problem is make some projects on your own, kind of simulate working at a job. Um, obviously not as good as having an actual job, but sometimes you don't have that option. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of run through five different projects that you can relatively easy set up on your own, get started with, and then have as examples of work for you to point back on and say, hey, I'm not just doing some theory, I actually know my stuff. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. And so the first example I have for you is a relatively simple one, but it's one that's gonna be applicable to almost any data engineering job you have. Um, and that is building a complete extract transform load pipeline that's going to ingest data from multiple sources transform it, standardize it, and then load it into a data warehouse or data lake. Um, and some technologies you might want to use to do this, you know, are some Python, you're going to use some Apache Airflow, some SQL, some knowledge of whatever database and object storage you're using, um, and also knowledge of the actual data that you're ingesting and then transforming. So it really shows you have, you know, at least experience with all of those different subsystems that you'd be required to use at your day job. Therefore, you know, hey, they know that you can do this role and you have experience with these technologies. Um, and it also just gives you, you know, hey, a sense of this is what my day-to-day -day will look like. Uh, this is what, you know, is actually going to be, you know, your bread and butter of your job. Um, so showcase that you can do this in a really well-designed way, a way that's efficient. You know, don't just settle for following some tutorial. Make it your own. Add some new transformations, maybe bring in some ML or AI workflows. Um, but really just showcase technologies that you know how to use um, to do something in a production light setting um, to by you know, transforming that data, storing it. That's what you're going to be doing as a data engineer. So good, great way to show off your skills and really easy one to get started with. Now, the second project idea I have for you is develop a real-time data streaming application. Um, you know, doing real-time data streaming, especially in the day of, you know, hey, when you need to have ML and AI workflows that are constantly monitoring and adjusting on the fly, Building real-time data streaming applications is super crucial for a lot of businesses. Um, and so what you might want to do in this project is set up a Kafka cluster that ingests streaming data from you know, something like an IoT device. That might honestly be hard, but social media APIs are a great lightweight way to just have a streaming data source. Um, and then show how you can use Apache Flink or something like Spark Streaming to process that data, either you know, as each independent unit of data is produced or as in kind of batch processing and then show storing those results in a NoSQL database like Cassandra, um, and then Dockerize the entire setup for easy deployment. Um, and you know, this shows you, uh, shows prospective employers, you know, you know how to use pretty much the entire full stack for streaming applications. You've got Kafka, you got Apache Flink or Apache Spark, Python, Docker, uh, Cassandra is becoming more and more popular. And it's also, again, a really, really common real world use case for a lot of data engineers. You know, having a data streaming application that consists of all these different components um, and is able to process something like social media data on the fly. You know, that is actually a real world use case that data streaming is very popularly used for because when you're working with social media applications, you've got to make those real time recommendations on, hey, you've watched this funny video, so you're probably also going to like this funny video. So showing that you're capable of building these applications can be really crucial uh, to prospective employers and you're showing, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's up to date with the latest data concepts. Now, the third project I have for you is try to design and implement a data warehouse. Um, so a good idea here would be, you know, hey, design and implement a data warehouse for a fictional e-commerce company. And so what you're gonna wanna do here is, you know, really act like you're trying to design a production database. Make sure you're choosing a star snowflake schema, have reasons for why you're choosing the schema of your choice. Make sure you're considering different data sources like sales, like inventory, customer data, implement data marts, sub databases. Um, make sure you're using database management systems. Also figure out, hey, how would this data actually be piped out to end users? 
um, and then use dbt and tools or tools like it to automate the transformation loading processes into those databases and then also transform that data after and building a project like this really shows off that hey you know one of the hardest things which is how to design the structure for all of your data to be stored in developing the schema for a database and kind of the structure of how you're going to store your data is often one of the most critical parts of the data architectural process. Because if you make a screw up in your schema and you know, all your data starts getting put in a really inefficient way, that's going to affect every portion of your business. It's gonna affect the time data gets delivered. It's gonna affect the consistency of the data that's delivered. It's going to affect the accessibility of the data. Um, there's really a ton of different downstream impacts if you don't get this right. So being able to showcase that, hey, you're able to do this and not only able to do this, but do it in an efficient and, and beautiful way. Um, and it also showcases, hey, you're really proficient with SQL, you're really proficient with database management systems, and also the transformation and you know, uh, processing, you can use something like DBT for that. And then also show that, hey, I'm up to date with the latest data engineering tools for transforming and, you know, and actually changing my data as I'm consuming it. Um, so a lot of real benefits to this project and also you know, really critical to any data engineering job. Now, my fourth project that I have for you is something that's super, super hot right now, and that is creating an end-to-end -end machine learning platform from data ingestion to model deployment. And a really easy way to kind of, a really you know, easy use case for machine learning models or machine learning pipeline is doing some text classification. Build a pipeline that you know, ingests social da uh, data from some kind of social media API or really anything that we're gonna be able to get large volumes of data show how you can pre-process that, do things like feature engineering, vectorizing your data to make it more easily consumable for the machine learning model, uh, then actually pick a machine learning model, train it, and deploy that model as an API, um, and then show how you can use it in production by continually submitting you know, new data sets, run it over time, use things like Apache Airflow for orchestrating the pipeline and having many different pipeline runs, having the historical run information, giving you the ability to do reruns and things like that, um, Scikit-learn is a great toolkit for model training. It just has a lot of really easy to use and free models that you can just use right out of the box. Um, and then Flask or Fast APIs are really you know, just quick and easy API setups that you can use for actually serving the model to your end users. Um, and since every single company out there has some kind of ML and AI initiative, this is a really great one because, hey, it shows you're on the forefront of change in the industry. You know, you're thinking about the latest and greatest things, and that's what people want to see out of their employees. They want to see forward thinking. People are like, all right, so this is where the industry is going. I want to go there, not where the industry has been. And this also involves a lot of really relevant technologies like Python, like Airflow, uh, TensorFlow, or PyTorch for your, your ML work, um, and then Flask or Fast API for actually developing a, an API interface. Um, that's something that kind of gets overlooked a lot in the data engineering world, but many times you'll actually need to develop your own APIs or ways to query your data from external sources. So this is a great way to get some experience and a really relevant example. Now, the final project I have for you is something that may not excite some people, but is also really critical to being a data engineer production, and that is implementing a data quality and monitoring dashboard to track the health of your data pipelines. Um, and so in this project, what you'll be doing is you know, developing scripts that are going to perform data quality checks and then generate metrics like data completeness, accuracy, timeliness, uh, and then schedule these checks using something like Apache Airflow or another tool. Uh, Prometheus, which is a metric collection tool um, to actually collect the metrics from your various subsystems and then use Grafana to visualize them in a dashboard. Um, and so this is really showing, hey, this is how data engineers are monitoring and building dashboards for production pipelines. You know, you're not going to have the time as an engineer to go in and individually check every pipeline every day, make sure it's up to snuff. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to build in these kind of automated alerting and reporting systems so that you can just log into one dashboard, be alerted on any kind of data pipelines that might be having issues, anything that's come up during your downtime, uh, and then have a really easy way to understand the information about what went wrong and go to that particular system to solve it and get that pipeline back up and running as quickly as possible. And having that efficient dashboard is a crucial part of that. And not only that, it also shows you, hey, this is how you can run agents to collect metrics about different systems, understand how to collate data from a bunch of different sources into a single dashboard. Um, so there are a lot of other kind of secondary benefits as well. And of course, you get experience with technologies like Python, SQL, Grafana, Prometheus, and, and Airflow again. 
So that's the last project I have for you. I f hope this has been kind of a comprehensive list of really just the five most important and most impactful data projects you can take on to put on your resume and hopefully get a job. Um, so I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.